What's up guys? So, okay, this, this is the S&P 500 and this white line represents the intermediate trend on this thing. If we look at the, this, this white line represents the trajectory of this current trend, which, and this is the month chart for the last, you know, looks like year, right? Cause this is when Corona happened. Prior to that, we were on a much, much more moderate of a path, okay? So today, what we're seeing is a retest. So this is this, how this kind of works, is this, the stocks trend in directions, right? So the long-term trend on this is what direction? It's up. And what we're seeing is you, you kind of have this resistance line right here, and every time it goes down, it travels. And this is a channel right here. So there's another one of these on the top. You can see how the stock, and, and the way you draw these is the highs. You connect the highs and the lows to, to see the intermediate channels and stuff. Okay, so basically, and now on a shorter time frame, we have an even narrower channel. So what, what we're seeing is a, narr a gradual narrowing of this channel, right? which means like we're about to reach an inflection point here. And whenever an inflection point is reached, you have a major surge up or a major surge down. So it's going to, you know, we're technically in what's known as consolidation and we're becoming even more pointed here as we zoom in. So this is the end of today, right? On the, on the S&P. And the, this is what I use as an overall gauge of the market's health. It's got a, it's got a good mix of all stocks. Um, right. So we had a high and now we're seeing some huge sell volume come in. So right now we're, we're literally about to retest this line. So what's gonna happen? Well, I don't know, you, you never know, but you, you can kind of gauge where things are going. Right now is a very dangerous point in the market. Why? Because the market's really, really overbought. Well, it was, it's starting to come down. The market's really, really overbought. So you need these corrections to kind of blow off steam. Um, I, you know, I don't know how long it'll last. And really, you can go below the line. Now, if you break the line clean, which means a big bar with a lot of volume, like 2008 type volume, you know, just big volume, you're setting up for a pretty big crash. You're setting up for a pretty big crash. So, reasonably if you want to know like if the stock market reaches a top reasonably we can expect a pretty big move down and this is why the long-term trend and channel so really you got to look at what's driving the market right so you could i would expect you know a big drop you could get down to here but even a small drop you could hit anywhere in the 367 to 332 range So Tesla is, is one I'm shorting right now. Um, and I'm probably not going to be shorting for much longer, but I'm going to show you Tesla's chart. Yeah, hold on, that thing. it looks ugly, right? This is obviously, this is a top. T the top is now some 300. So what you have now is a, it, this, this stock will either find consolidation or this stock will either find consolidation, which means it'll bounce and then it'll, it'll probably form like a long-term pennant. You know, you can see this already occurring on the volume. See, Tesla likes to move in pennants. There was a pennant formation here, pop. There was a pennant formation here, pop. Oh, that was a big pop, right? Now it's gonna form another pennant. But I think the bottom on Tesla then is not this big crash. This is why I've been day trading this. This is a perfect falling channel. So, and I love, this is what's known as a, uh, well, this is a crappy one. This is like a cattail. Big cattails, I guess you'd call them. See how this kind of looks like a cattail with this huge spike? This means that the price momentarily, this is how you know you're at a top. The price momentarily, I mean, it wasn't even on that big a volume when this first started. It dipped all the way down to, what's, this, what's the low here? 619. Holy crap. That's, that's like just piercing. This thing just pierces all these levels, which means it makes it so much easier for the stock to fall through the levels then. So, so one, you have that. And two, you have now the intermediate trend on this is, 
I mean, look at this volume right here. The intermediate trend on this is now down. It's down until it's up. And I'm not seeing, any, what I'm seeing more and more is more and more sell volume. I actually don't see any su real support on here until about 650, I'd say. Probably right around the top of the cattail. So, so the trade here was today, the, this, is, this is a lot of risk though, because you're shorting a stock that traditionally goes straight up, right? You're shorting a stock that traditionally goes straight up. So, but you can see this is where it ended yesterday, top of the channel. Everyone thinks it's going to, but there's no volume. Like it's going up these few days. Okay, here's Kathy Woods buy, right? No other volume. It's like it's going up. So this is a week and you know it's going to bounce here and boom, straight down. And it's going to go down to, I'll probably close my position out at like 650. Tesla just looks really weak long term right now. And it's got nothing behind it. You see this big, I can't believe that woman bought all that, put all that money in there. I mean, oh my God, look at this chart. <laughs> this chart does not look healthy. This is a down chart. This is, look at all this sell volume. This is insane sell volume. And this is going back now for, this is, a, this is sustained. Look at this. Tesla's RSI is almost oversold. Ooh, big drop coming. Big drop. You know, what's, what's, what's the lowest this thing can go? Well, we can go pretty low. <laughs> this is the max chart on this thing. This is, this is what we call a parabolic rise. I, I mean, I, what I, where do I think it would go? Probably right around here. Two, parabolic, big drop. Probably somewhere at two, three hundred. And that's not based on the financials. If this thing goes to what the financials are based on, pff, this thing's going sub hundred, hundred. But that's, that's the thing about sell markets. Reality snaps eventually. But right now, I don't see this as a crash right now. I see this as a healthy market correction. Um, you know, I, I think Tesla will, rem it'll, it'll probably hard bounce right around here. You could probably get some short options. This is a pretty good chunk of play left, I think. But, you know, it's Tesla. It's hard to bet against something like this, right? This has been straight up. Real difficult. So that's why I, this is, I consider this a high risk play. The way I trade this, you go into the option markets, the way I've been trading this, I mean, the, the simplest way and the safest way is you can get a really good deal on spreads, on, on vertical spreads. So puts, basically I'm saying that, but I don't trade them, I trade them short term weeklies when I'm taking advantage of moves like this. These are, these are ones, now the, the nice thing a lot of people don't know about weeklies is uh, let's say you, you want to give your position more time, it's like for 30 more dollars you can kick it forward another week. So I just, I rolled my position, you know, yeah you're rolling losses until you're not, but it's not as, you gotta, you gotta exercise that patience. So, so I think Ted was asking me about this, like what do, what do I, so basically I'll, Honestly, I'll look for the best spread. And I, this, this is options, trading options is a completely different thing. You literally, even if, it's, if, it's, if you're trading the option the first thing in the morning at like 10 o'clock, it's gonna be swelled. It'll, have a, it'll be a much more expensive option because it has all of this implied volatility. It swells because that's when everybody trades is first thing in the morning. So if you wait an hour, the option price is kind of collapsed a little bit and that's when you get your best deals. But you also want to buy these things seriously. I, I bought this, these options right at the top. This, oh, it was such a beautiful play this morning. Because it gapped down. In the first 15 minutes of the market, the options, the, it opened down here. And it went all the way up to here. And up, right, right up here is where I, bought the, I sold these options. Well, I bought, the, I bought a vertical spread. And I'll show you how I did that. I literally got in right at the top and then this thing went <laughs> and I sold half of it already for, for like a $400 profit and I'm going to hold the other half because I could probably still make, you can make a max gain on this thing of like $2,000. It was a pretty nice trade. I bought and sold. So I did buy vertical. You're buying the seven, but instead of a five spread, I like to put a, a full grand in there. Boom. So right now these things are going for 328. I think I got in at one, 
150 to 160, I want to say. These are the put side. This is when you buy these options, you buy them, the more the stock goes down, the more these increase in value. Okay, but you're buying one, you're buying one and you're selling one. So you're technically you're buying a vertical. Then I also on the monthly bought, well, they're still weeklies, but these are farther out. I bought a much lower because I got a really good deal on these. They were swole. Swole. Yeah, I think I got these things for like, dude, I got these things for like 60 bucks, I want to say. Well, add them to the thing. I used to be really, really good at doing these things. Analyze. Ooh, look at that thing. So this thing was like, this was a pretty gnarly trade. Um, I, I think I, this is this is almost exactly what it was, I believe. Flatten this curve out. Don't bone me. You're boning me, chart. It, spread it on all right so the bottom of this this is your break even right here okay and the bottom of this you can see over here to the left this will tell you so my max loss is what like six oh, I guess it's like seven that's 742 the max gain on this trade was in the short term which is what I'm looking at like if I get if I get out of this trade at 650 what does that net me? $2,400-ish. But I sold half of them early to make up for the initial cost. So, but I mean, that's that's on like two or three days. That's like a day of trading. It's a good, it's a good trade. That's a good trade, right? Considering where it was at. So that's how it was entered and it was like, bam. But those are, those trades you gotta enter fast. And they're really, really risky if you don't know what you're doing. Like you'll you'll get you'll you'll lose your ass if you don't know what you're doing. You'll, you'll lose a lot of money. But that's how I play that. I'll I'll do something like that. And what I'll do on the weeklies, what I like, you know, like let's say I want to roll this forward. Well, it's like fifty bucks and you can you know, you're like, oh, I want to buy myself an extra week. It's like 50 extra bucks. You just wait because you got time. You got all week. Playing the weeklies, you can make a lot of money if you're smart and you're, and you're patient. And they're really good for trends. Like right now, if I saw confirmation that, like if Tesla got a bounce, I might add to a position like this. I, I, I might carry a, a, a revolving position like this. And yeah, you could you could sell calls again. You could sell vertical. So so I think Ted maybe asked me that. You could if you wanted to go more more neutral on on uh, if you wanted to leverage a little bit more to and create more cash in your uh, you could sell vertical calls against your it with your vertical puts. So as this thing goes down, you're really making your right. You could sell uh, vertical. help fund this trade. So this will put cash in, right? For each of these you sell. Boy, he's got some. What am I selling? I'm buying the 710 and I'm selling the 7. That's going to make me $440 as long as Tesla doesn't go up to 700, right? It doesn't even, right, like those will just expire worthless and I'll get to keep $440. That's a good trade, I would say. What, like, what's the highest Tesla's going right now? I can tell you this. I mean, yeah, it's possible this thing breaks out, but I mean, this is some pretty nasty volume. Like, look at this. This is the first pierce right here. Like, this is, this is why I said this was so scary, even on the rebound. This is some big volume. 
it's a big and then Kathy Wood buys right into it like ugh, that was not it, it's probably just going to be a minor correction and really what you're looking at the long term line right here like max this thing's probably going to drop down to like 560 and it'll bounce and then it'll kind of dindle around here for you know months and months and months and months but ooh, I you never buy into a position like this you never buy a stock with a technical like this this is this is an ugly like this last two weeks has been an ugly ugly two weeks of selling for Tesla real ugly um I don't think it's going down here. I don't. I think it could. There's a strong argument to be made that it could. <laughs> but people, 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 you know, a stock like Tesla trades at a multiple because of the, the, follow, the cult following behind it. And I don't think that's going to change. I don't think the cult following is going to change at all. I think if anything, it just entrenches them. They're, 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 oh, it's still, you know, I'll buy more. That's what they'll say. This thing will go all the way down to 100. Oh, Bob, I'm buying hundreds of it. Like, that's... But I think that cult following keeps Tesla inflated, even even though the financials, you know, don't justify it. I think that's gonna that's 